Oh, and uh, Mr. Mora, Patrick Gibo is on line one. Oh, is he? Gibo? But I'm not in Gibo's for lunch today. I'm going to lunch in Sangster's in the Isle of Man. <laughs> oh, bonjour, Patrick, or should that be soup de jour? <laughs> Come on, telez-vous, où est la salle de bain, or have you hung yourself? <laughs> this is very serious, Monsieur Marin. There is an old tramp searching through the bins outside my restaurant looking for something. Uh, he say he is a friend of yours. Do you know him? His name is uh, E. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, I don't know any I.E. Guillem, uh... put that poulet back in the pot. We don't want animal rights people around. Monsieur Mara, are you sure you do not know this? Or E? Uh, no, no. <laughs> the name does not mean anything. Uh, or E? No. Give me the phone. Mara, what the hell are you doing? You know damn well who I am. Uh, boss, uh, it's yourself. Uh, I mean, I mean Charlie. Charlie boy, Charlie baby. None of your impertinence, Mara. Uh, just a moment, I'll deal with this feather friend first. <laughs> Patrick, what's the after doing to the poor old board? Did he strangle her? No, monsieur. Extraordinary, just stared at it. <laughs> and it stopped. I know the feeling. <laughs> Give me that phone back. Mara, I've checked all the bins down here. I still can't find them up. Those leaflets. The one million point one million leaflets. Oh, the money. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what you're looking for. There's no sign of it. Ah, oh, well, uh, you know yourself, Charlie. Not much change out of one point one million after a lunch in Gibos. You must leave now, old man. What did you do with the money? I heard the remark about Langille. I must protest. All right, let me correct myself. After lunch in your gaff, there'd be no change left out of one by one million quid. How dare you? Jesus, Patrick, when you came here first, you had a bit of an accident, all right, but now it's got worse. <laughs> Jesus, now you're as bad as your mountain euro trash. Oh, we, oui, monsieur, my uh, business is business, you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm here in a particularly godforsaken and depressed area of Dublin <laughs> talking to some people who are queuing for a living. <laughs> now here's a very sad and battered and miserable looking couple here. Excuse me, what's your name? Uh, Derek. Now, <laughs> now Derek, why are you queuing up here outside Labour Party headquarters? Well, things is very bad at the moment, you know. The, there's no work to be had. There's nothing. There's hardly even a seat left to sit on, you know. Uh, at least you have a proper job. Well, it wasn't what you'd call a proper job, but it kept me going, you know, for the last four years. Uh, I was a backbencher. Right. It, it, is that skilled employment? No, not really, no. Uh, but still, it was a job, you know, and now even that's going to go very soon. Uh, <laughs> Basically, I'll be back on the scrap heap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's... That, that's terrible. You look um, like maybe you're going to cry, yeah, are you? Yeah, you were not actually me once. Great, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, you, your friend seems a bit distressed. Too. Sorry, what's your name? Joan. Joan, you look like you've something really horrible and sad to tell me. Why are you being tragically deprived of your livelihood? Well, you see, it's prejudice, really, you know. Once people find out that you have farm, you know, that you've been on the inside. Right, a, a member of the Labour Party. Oh, sure, not so loud, not so loud, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, that kind of thing, yeah, you know. We've done your time right, like Joan and me. Well, then you see, they don't want to know. Yeah, they just shut their doors on you. 
people have this notion in their heads of some kind of decadent lifestyle, you know, fast chauffeur driven cars and jets, and they think that's the real me. <laughs> if they only knew the deep tone, I'm just struggling to keep my head above water, same as they are. It's very, very sad, yeah. Would you like to cry as well? <laughs> Great, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, could it be even more appallingly depressing, Joan? In, in your relationship with the, uh, the Labour Party, have you experienced violence? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, our boss now... What's his name? Dick is... No, boss? Fergus. Fergus, yeah. Fergus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he, he might slap me around verbally, verbally a bit, yeah, all yeah. right, you know, shouting and stuff, it's but I'd, I'd never have said it was an abusive oh. relationship, you know. I, 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 a bit dysfunctional, a bit, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. Okay. but that's not our fault. Oh. You see, it's society that is to blame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't just care about our plight. Right, yeah, listen... <laughs> Would, would the two of you like a last cry, yeah? Oh, okay. yeah thanks. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Oh, for God's sake, stop snivelling, caller. You're on the national radio. Get off the line. Now, who's next? Hello, Moira. Sha a caller, you're on the air. Well, can I just say congratulations? Well, thank you very much. I think you're doing a great job, Bert. Very nice of you to say so. As good as Marion any day. Oh, now will you stop the no, issue? Twice as good. <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't. No, really no, I mean say it. And I'm a big fan of Marion's, mind you. Well, I used to be till I heard you. Yeah, Marion's great. Yeah, I think we all agree that she's a thoroughly adequate presenter well, in her day. Well, if you want my opinion. Morris, since I've heard you, I couldn't care less if I never heard Marion again. As long as we have you, and tell us, would you not do something on the telly as well? Oh, one day at a time, sweet Jesus is my motto. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go out of an evening, nor would my wife, if I knew you were going to be on the telly, you're that good. You should be doing the late late, so you should sure gay as well pass at this stage anyway. Well, I, I agree, of course, that any programme, no matter how successful, it does need rejuvenation, and I suppose even the late late could do with... A the... new lease of life, oh. and you'd be just the person. You're a breath of fresh air now, you are. Now, would you ever think of going for president, maybe? Well, I suppose now that you mention it, I, I, I could bring a certain something special. And I, I'm only to, amazed. Uh... I'm only amazed I've never heard of you before. <laughs> What have you been doing all these years? I mean, I, I detect a certain maturity in your voice, so you're obviously no spring chicken. Are you trying to tell me you've never heard of me before? Mara Gagan Quinn. That's right, Jess, yeah, should I? Uh, don't tell me you're the one that does the weather. No, I am not. I'm Mara Gagan Quinn from Galway, Galway West. Ah, uh, well, you see, now, if you're on Tina G, now, I've never is seen that. Is this some kind no. of sick joke caller? Because if it is... No, no, uh, no, 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 should I think you're the bee's knee? I'm I famous, don't. for God's sake. I've been famous for years. You don't think for a minute, do you, that I'd have been asked to present Live Line if I wasn't famous already, do you? You think that it had anything to do with talent, did you, you poor gobshite? <clears throat> uh, yes. Well, um, next caller, please. The Live Line stays open until 3 o'clock. Ah, yes, Tommy Darashrish. We're back and we're back with a bang. Uh, with me in the studio now are Nora Bennis and Judge Rory O'Hanlon. To reminisce with me about the fun and laughter and joy of those great faith of our father days. Nora, was it the sense of ritual, of order, that made these days Kahanis Bashil to our fun? Indeed, Donica. Nowadays, you see, we've lost all that sense of occasion. Remember how we used to get up at seven o'clock on the morning of the third oh, Wednesday after the full moon, and we'd cut one slice of pan loaf in the shape of the Sacred Heart and toast it on both sides till it was pure black. Yes. <laughs> and then you'd eat it without butter. 
And eat no more for the whole day, isn't that right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because to be your preparation for the feast of the blessed candles of the tongue of the Holy Spirit. Uh, is that feast a particular favourite of yours, Roar? Oh, it's a cornerstone of my childhood. Uh, I remember well how we'd all line up at the altar rails with our mouths open and our eyes shut, uh, tight in adoration, and the priest would pass by us one by one and pour the hot candle grease on our tongues. Oh, yes. I, I still remember the, the thrill of that first sizzle. It was, it was transfiguring, and I, I, I love the sense of tradition and, and the sense also, I suppose, of burning flesh. Oh, my say, my say. A lovely pungent smell wafting down oh, from heaven. Yes. Uh, and, of course, any slight physical disorder comfort you would feel in the month or so after that was nothing compared to the incandescent spiritual healing that, that you would experience. Uh, very much so, yes, yes. But what about the music, Rory, on Chore? We've just heard Frank there in fine voice. It was those glorious hymns that expressed the true joy of those times, wasn't it? Did you have a personal favourite to him? Oh, the one that always brought tears to my eyes was, oh, cut my heart out, Jesus, and fires... <laughs> And fires into hell. Yes, yes. yes. Great, great film. Take all my organs sinful and chop them up as well. Stop, stop, stop. You're bringing it all back. Will you ever forget? Please spank me, Queen of Heaven. I've steeped my soul oh, in Martha, sin. Yeah. Oh. Please spank me, Queen of Heaven. I've steeped my soul in sin. My filthy heart's determined to let by Satan in. Because I plead to please you, please tear me limb from limb. And burn me slowly in hell. Fire rise blisters. On my skin, oh, oh, so uplifting, so joyous. Oh. 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 And you know, you know, it is uh, mighty to see it all so popular again. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. John, there's a weirdo in your private office, sitting at your desk, screaming blue murder, saying awful things. Well, Margaret again, is it? Uh, uh, no, no, Mr. John. Uh, this looks like a wrinkled, twisted, ugly old man. That's right, Margaret, yeah? He was shouting things like, I put him where he is today, and Ben John would be nothing if it wasn't for me. I'd oh, see, Jay. Oh, thanks. That's okay, love. Uh, I'll go into him. Uh, Charlie! Charlie, how he is? I never bread. Uh, ben. Young Ben. Yeah. The money's disappeared, Ben. The 1.1 million pounds. So I heard, Charlie. <clears throat> Mara says he knows nothing about it. And you wouldn't dare lie to me. I, and I, as you know, am normally above soiling my hands. Oh, and, directly. Yeah, with yeah. such vulgar matters. Uh. <laughs> but for 1.1 million quid, you'll make an exception. Oh, well, I feel I should do something in the interest of my old party. There'd be a lot of interest in uh, on 1.1 uh, million quid, all right, yeah. Uh, whoever has it, you know, uh, you, you know, you yeah. know everything, don't you, Ben? I certainly know who I gave the money to. Charlie. Oh, but Ben, you wily old fox. <laughs> you won't be telling anyone, will you? Oh, now, Charlie, you're not threatening me, are you? Now, careful, otherwise I might have to set Lowry on you. Lowry? <laughs> Terrors for children, Master Don. A man of my eminence threatened by Lowry. Remember, Ben, a prophet of man, nothing. If he gains the whole world, but loses his soul. But for North Tip, Ben. North tip. No, no. <laughs> now listen to me, Charlie. You, you listen to me. 1.1 1. 1 smackaroos. A lot of money I have out there somewhere. Yeah, well, that's the kind of money that would fund an entire election campaign. <laughs> I have left the hurly burly behind, the scrabbling in the pig trough for petty truffles. I leave that to the political pygmies with the shiny shoes and the even shinier faces who wish to swagger back to their hamlets with their last three strands of hair dragged from one ear over the head to the other ear <laughs> in a pathetic attempt to fool themselves that they have a full, lustrous head of hair like myself. Symptomatic of their voyage of self delusion which is their very lives. Well, suit yourself, but with that kind of money you could do a lot, uh, even make a man president. <clears throat> president? Yeah. Well, of course, uh, presidency has long been a hallmark of the Hawhey clan. Yeah. President yeah. Abraham Hawhey fought the... <laughs> 
fought the tyranny of slavery and worked like an, worked very hard to achieve their freedom. Uh, President Boris Hawhey, on the other hand, got tax exemptions uh, for all vodka drinkers who could prove Russian residency, while President John